when we look at the, the actual head mount display, the most obvious thing is the resolution is relatively low. What, what you're seeing on the screen is a 1280 by 800 display, and it's essentially a six inch display in the back here with some optics that let you look at this. Rather than being frame sequential stereo like a 3D TV where you say you show left eye and right eye and left eye and right eye, it takes the entire screen and it's essentially split in half here. You've got two sets of lenses that just each eye looks at one half of the screen. So you have about a 90 degree horizontal field of view and more than that vertically, which is what you need for the immersive experience. And lo and behold, it works remarkably well. So yeah, while I was at QuakeCon recently, I had a chance to go up to a hotel suite with John Carmack uh, and try out his homemade virtual reality headset uh, that I guess he's been working on for a pretty long time. It's still not ready for consumer use because there's a great total of one game that has all the support for it. You can't watch 3D movies at it. The resolution's still not what you want on there. You can probably get it that there's there's something here. You've got this little vision of the future and the way things are going to be with this. We were playing uh, Doom 3 with the headset and uh, you can see what it looks like the headset itself and it's actually just a pair of ski goggles uh, with a lot of duct tape, a couple of screens, hot glue holding like a sensor on uh, so, that it, so the head tracking works. If I have to choose what to show people, the field of view is the most important thing. The next two most important things that need to improve are the response time and then uh, absolute position tracking on here. Uh, some of the other stuff that went into the development of this is getting the, the latency down as much as possible through the entire chain. This is currently a 1280 by 800 display panel, and it's stretched over both eyes and that enormous field of view. The head mount display is really zero steps removed. Your brain knows what the world's supposed to look like when you look. Every set of muscle contractions in your neck, your brain has a model of what the world should look like there. So that means every delay that you have on top of that is much, much more noticeable. When you put it on with headphones, you have like zero awareness of what's going on in the world around you which you know is obviously way more immersive than you know putting on 3d glasses and looking at a tv or something like that you get more of your sense of depth from the minor tiny motions you know, like when i'm looking over here i'm looking at the parallax between the back of the couch and the, uh, and the monitors and the chairs behind it and just those millimeter level motions of the head are really really important there's a half dozen clever things that go on in making this happen and, and integrating the right pieces on there but there's nothing that's deep software wizardry here. It's a systems integration problem. And yeah, and actually, you know, for, for how homemade the piece of kit looked, it was surprising how good it was. While I was playing it, there were actually just all these big, thick cables coming off the goggles, and John Carmack is there holding them, uh, almost, almost like he had me on a leash. Clearly, you want to eventually have speakers integrated into something like this. You want to have all of the, either a single cable that's much smaller or wireless links for some of the stuff. There's plenty of directions for this to improve. Even if you went to self-contained on there, which is the future, eventually this will be the equivalent of your, your iPad 5 or Tinker 5 system internally that's all self-contained that doesn't have wires to a PC. And it is a cell phone. Cell phones have gyros, cell phones have display controllers, GPUs, computers, displays on there. All it does is add some optics and a head mount on top of it. So you should expect that in the future, head mounted displays would have similar price points to smartphones, similar or, or tablets on there, where you have the range from your cheapest bargain basement stuff on there up to very high-end ones with the latest and greatest processors, and custom materials for all of that. We were using a 360 controller and I must admit, like I was, I was definitely using the right stick to do most of my looking around, because you know, I'm used to playing with a controller. I'm not used to playing with a VR headset. Um, but I did, you know, I sort of did, made very deliberate attempts to to do the looking around thing. And then when I'm going down steps, I would like look down, and you know, sure enough, you could. Uh, so I don't know, you could see your feet. I don't know if they were modeled, but he he definitely had accounted for the fact that when you, you know, in real life, when you lean forward, you you're not pivoting your head on the same point, you are, it's actually moving, and so he, he is allowed for all of that. Uh, and the effect was, it was pretty convincing and, and definitely made that game very immersive. I'm pretty confident that the longer term solution is to take something like this and you put two, uh, two cameras, basically cell phone cameras on the front, so you can have pass through AR, like as you all saw, finding your controller is tough on this, you wish you could just tap the side of it, have it show the rest of the world there. So you put on your head, not pick up your controller, tap it, and go back. 
being able to do pass through augmented reality type stuff I, where you annotate the world around you through there. That's all interesting, but my main purpose for it is to give the position tracking stuff with optics and then to be able to do inside out connect type stuff. Where what you want to be able to do is bring your hands up in front of it and see them rendered in the world. Look down and have it identify your body skeleton and render that into the world. It's cool technology and I love that John Carmack is now kind of champion, championing it and you know, making stuff himself. We can get this out this year as uh, like Palmer's Kickstarter stuff going out and it will be something for developers to use. It's not for consumers, it's not ready. We'll find people that say, I'm willing to go spend $300 just to play Duke 3 in, a, in virtual reality, but it's not something I can make a straight-faced argument and say, lots of people should go do this. It's clearly something for developers or leading edge enthusiast types. Now, I'm not entirely sold on the idea that this is the future of gaming. I wasn't sold on it 10, 15 years ago, the first time I tried it, and I'm not really sold on it now. If we get through this, Doom 3 goes out with the support for this. If a thousand people wind up playing this and going through working out the issues, hacking it around, trying different things with it, and then we see sort of a next generation with a better panel and better ergonomics, uh, more software support coming out. Uh, if we get all of all of ZeniMax and all of Valve and all of Epic, the, the some kind of leading light studios to get behind this and make the next major release a ship with this technology built in. We could see all of this. I think people will look back and say 2012 is when the ball really got rolling. It's very exciting what's possible with a few hundred dollars worth of parts and some duct tape. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens, but I, I will not be rushing out to buy one. The future's this way, let's all go. <laughs>